Hiding behind a mask, protesters fight for justice against a police force that can no longer be trusted. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. On Wednesday night, June 12th, teachers and students showed up in force around the seat of the Hong Kong government. Their demand and a controversial extradition bill that could allow the Hong Kong government to send people from Hong Kong to mainland China for trial. You know, where people tend to get killed for their organs. The police responded with a kind of brutality rarely seen in Hong Kong. They fired 150 cans of tear gas. They fired bean bags and rubber bullets, hitting one man in the face. He was later arrested at the hospital, since police can access people's information directly from hospital records. It was a horrifying night that left many traumatized and helped spark a two million person strong march only a few days later. Now protesters wear masks to hide their identities from the authorities. Fighting for justice while wearing a mask, like Batman, only with less weapons and more public support. During Sunday's two million strong march, I spoke with two protesters who were there the night of June 12. Why were you out uh, on the streets protesting on Wednesday night? On a Wednesday night, I just feel like Carol Lam did not hear our voice, and our voice are being neglected. 1.03 million ordinary citizens like myself went onto the streets, and our voice was crystal clear. We want the government to withdraw the extradition bill to China. I opened the television and I saw the very shocking picture. The people, the people, were shot by the by the police. They, they, they very clearly to see the people shoot to the head. This is really shocking. And they attacked the, the, the journalists. And uh, the, the riot police uh, rush over there. And the people keep going, keep going, moving. The, everywhere is tear gas. And I feel very, very shocked. Um, I hesitate a while and just again and, 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 and go out again. So you were, you were initially kind of scared to go out there? Yeah, really scared. But I, I, I just don't want to fight alone. What happened when the police turned violent? Protester sent out a clear message to Carrie Lam. You need to withdraw the bill by 3.30 on Wednesday. Otherwise, we'll occupy the Legislative Council. However, our voice was not heard. So students and protesters were surround the Legislative Council and police just like burst out tear gas with batons. Um, of course, there are some chaos in between protester and police. But the majority of the students there were protesting very peacefully. Suddenly I heard BAM! And people were screaming, someone got shot, someone got shot. So I was furious and curious at the same time. And I saw the medics carry a injury person out with a big wound all over his face with really thick blood. The blood was so thick and, and it left a big stain on the ground. So the police force just sent out, um, it's called Special Tactic Squad, SDS, AKA Raptors. So the Raptors just keep beating us students in the front line. What do you think of the police response? I think, I, I, I don't have, to much emotion to the police because I, I, I realized that after the uh, umbrella movement, uh, I, I, I just think that they are just like a machine, just follow the order. I, I can't believe uh, the, peop, the, the police want to shoot our head. Mm -hmm. Must be someone ordered them to do so and they f just follow the order. So when you were there on Wednesday night and the police were firing rubber bullets and tear gas, how did you feel? I feel furious. I feel disappointed. The special attack force um, beat up students in the front line. The protesters were not doing anything provocative, and we were not provoking the police. While protesters were being squeezed in between, like sandwiches, the raptors just keep tearing, throwing like tear gas into the crowd. I see a lot of families, a lot of young students, like five foot little girls were there. Um, I mean, Hong Kong police force, ask yourself, 
you got families. How can you do that to ordinary, ordinary citizen and tax player like us? So what do you think of Carrie Lam calling it organized riots? To be honest, um, they are just ordinary students from my observation. Um, many of them are like high school or student in university. I don't see how ordinary students like them could be an organized crime. We are not talking about triads or any terrorist organization. So Carrie Lam, you should really watch your word. For those watching, why do you want to keep your face hidden? Because now the police said this, 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 uh, this event is riot, yeah, and this is a very serious crime, uh, several years at least. So I have to in jail. Yeah, in jail. So I have to cover our face. So why do you want to hide your face? I want to stay anonymous because Hong Kong right now is filled of um, white terror. The hospital uh, assisting um, po the police to make arrests in emergency room. So people need to be really careful. And the police are start making a lot of arrests now. So I want to stay anonymous, anonymous because I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And what do you think about Carrie Lam saying she's postponed the extradition bill? Um, Is that enough? She lied, of course, she lied. Um, I, I just think she, she is not um, the someone to uh, decide to go this bill, but she have to listen the order from someone. I don't know what is someone, maybe the country, maybe someone, the, the leadership, but uh, his, uh, her response is really, really, really shit, yeah. So you're not satisfied with Carrie Lam saying they're gonna postpone the extradition bill? That's a big difference between postpone and suspend. And are you worried about the future, both for yourself and Hong Kong? Of course, of course. We are quite uh, disappointed at this press. And after everything you saw on Wednesday night, uh, are you afraid to be back here today? Uh, of course, of course, I scared. Everybody's scared. We're just citizens, we have no power. We are not armed, but we have to. We just have to. And are you nervous being here again today after everything that happened? I am really panicked. I'm paranoid. And um, what are your feelings about the future for Hong Kong and for yourself? To be honest, if it keep going, if it keep progressing this way, I don't see no future in Hong Kong. I feel like the police, the government are trying to end our future. Students are our younger generation and we need to protect them, educate them, but not forcefully spoon feed them what they think we should learn. It's all about critical thinking. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for joining. Thank and thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell reporting from Hong Kong.